Welcome to the eighth and final audiology capstone research video. In this video, we'll discuss how to appraise and select sources for your topic. We'll be following the American Speech Language Hearing Association steps for assessing the evidence you found. First of all, why is it important to appraise the evidence? The process of sharing research methods and results transparently is part of the scientific process. The purpose is not only to share the results, but the most important aspect of it is to enable others to critique the methods and results and find flaws and errors or to disprove hypotheses. This is essential to the scientific process and allows for errors to be corrected. You're a part of this process. As someone reading and using this information, it's your responsibility to think critically about it before considering how to use it. So just because it's a research study in a peer-reviewed journal does not make it error-proof. Think of all of these studies as there for you to critique and think critically about so that they can be improved upon. With that in mind, we'll start off with three questions. Will the research design help me answer my clinical or research question? What are the limitations of the research evidence? Is it from a trusted source of information? We had discussed previously about how some study designs were best suited to answering different types of questions. So you could check to see what type of study you're looking at to see whether it's one of the preferred study types for of your type of question. You can check the British Medical Journal's glossary of evidence-based medicine terms for definitions and descriptions of different types of studies. However, in general, you can use this hierarchy of evidence to determine how much weight you should give to the results of the study in relation to answering your clinical question. At the bottom, and the least valid, would be the background information and expert opinion. These would be our reviews, medical textbooks, and pieces based upon expert opinion. These can give you good background information, but are not generally considered good evidence for clinical decision making. Next would be unfiltered information through studies, such as randomized controlled trials, cohort studies, and case controlled studies, or a case series or case reports. These are all single studies. You can see that randomized controlled trials are higher up because their study design is stronger, but they're, they're still in the middle of the pyramid. This is because they're single studies. Just because a single study has one result does not mean that another study with the same methodology would have the same result. Studies need to be repeated to see what the results are after they've been repeated many times, then stronger conclusions can be drawn based upon their combined results. This is where the filtered information comes in at the top of the pyramid. This filtered information is essentially summaries of many studies on a topic where a body of literature is looked at and conclusions are drawn. Thus, if you find systematic reviews or critically appraised topics, you can know that you're looking at stronger evidence. Meta-analyses are really at the top of the pyramid because they're essentially like systematic reviews that have used statistical analysis of the combined results from the literature on the topic to draw conclusions about it. When done well, this statistical analysis about multiple studies is very strong evidence. The graphic also shows how observational studies are lower levels of evidence where experimental studies are higher levels since they can usually account for more variables. And then studies of studies, systematic reviews, and meta-analyses are at the top. So if you can find studies that are closer to the top of the evidence period pyramid, you can feel more confident about their conclusions. Your job as a scientist is to really think critically about this next section. Did the study have a clearly stated and focused aim or objective? How well was the study designed? Did the study clearly describe the methods, including the intervention protocol and relevant characteristics of the population? Did the investigators use blinding or random assignment? Did the study objectively identify and account for other confounding factors, such as those from the restrictions of the study design? Overall, critique their methods and stay tuned to identify any possible flaws and consider how it could be improved. Another important thing to consider would be conflict of interest and publication bias. When researchers are supposed to declare any conflict of interest, some ways to identify it may be when a paper, a study appears to sensationalize the information, there may be there's a lack of peer review, or the organization it's from has an alternative agenda which is not purely the advancement of scientific knowledge. Publication bias occurs when results of the study influence whether or not the study is published. 
Unfortunately, studies with positive or significant findings are most are more likely to be published than those with null or negative findings. This means that when you look at the literature on a topic, you might be seeing more positive or significant findings published simply because these studies with null or negative findings were not published as frequently. This provides us with a skewed image of the topic. Null and negative findings are very important to understanding a topic, so be aware that this could be happening when you look at the literature on a topic. Remember that in addition, to looking at synthesized research studies such as meta-analyses and systematic reviews. You can also look at the ASHA ev evidence maps and pro with, um, which provides some appraisal of the sources for you. Last of all, consider whether the study provides statistical information such as confidence intervals or effect sizes of the outcomes. This will help you determine whether the results are statistically significant and also meaningful. Essentially, you want to know whether the evidence is strong enough to make a clinical decision. And you want to determine whether you can generalize the results to your clients. So in our example, we may not be able to generalize the results to our clients because it was looking at adults and we were looking at children. Thanks for watching these videos. I'm looking forward to working with you in class. Please come to class with your questions and be ready to put what you learned in these videos into practice. If you need any help from the library, here's the contact information. You can talk, contact me to work with you on your research for your capstone project. I can help with selecting a research topic, focusing your research topic, developing a search strategy, identifying information sources or databases to search, finding references and information for your research question, evaluating and selecting references, and citing your sources. You can reach me by phone, email, or you can schedule a meeting directly to my calendar using the Calendly link provided in this slide. Everyone in the library is here as a team to support you, so please reach out anytime.